Rub up your engines! Can you get a Toyota for a thousand bucks? This still can be a good car. Now this is a 2010 RAV4. Guy just bought it for a thousand bucks. And as you can see, 115,000 miles. Not much for a RAV4, but you got it for only a thousand bucks because it was T-boned in the side. The girl didn't want the car anymore. You can see there's damage, but the door still opens and closes. It's in Tennessee now. It did start out as a New York State car. A horrible rust on the wheels superficial rust on the rotors. You can sand that down and paint it if you want. The main thing is, do you want to fix the body work? Or perhaps just drive it as is. You can buy junkyard fenders and doors cheaply enough and just bolt them on and off. The car needs a paint job anyway. The clear coat is faded off. They didn't do a good job when they built these cars. A lot of them fade off. You can see the hood's still good. It's mainly the sun area, but they didn't paint them right. Doors are fine, so is the back. Only out of New York. So let's look at the rust factor. It's 12 years old. You see superficial rust. But the control arms are good. The frame, still really solid. You're going to see superficial rust like this. It's a tow hook. But the tow hook is still solid. So let's scan it. Looking out scan tool. There's no codes. So we'll start it up. Starts up normal. I'll go to live data. We can see short term fuel trim isn't much. 0.8. 0.8, 1.6. For an old car, it's still running pretty efficiently. The airflow from the mass air, 2.5, 1.54, that's normal too. The short tune fuel trim is 99.2 out of 100. That's almost perfect. For a car this old, that's pretty good. So this vehicle's running like a top. And sure, the tire pressure monitoring system is acting up. Hey, it's a 12 year old Toyota. I put my scan tool on for TPMS. It showed that all the batteries are worn out. You'd have to replace all the sensors on all the tires. It would cost many, many hundreds of dollars. Just use the air pressure gauge. That'll work fine. That's no reason to get rid of a car. Something dumb like that. Those systems all break down as they age. Most people aren't going to spend the money. They'll get a tire gauge. They work just as well as long as you check them every once in a while. Now we know this thing was T-boned on the side. It's obvious. That's how he got it so cheap. I'm just kind of guessing that, hey, this thing isn't going to run like a thousand dollar car. It'll probably run quite well. This is where buying a car that has superficial damage, bent fenders, bent doors. Now we're going to make sure it tracks good. That from the wreck it doesn't pull to one side or the other. Or that you hear large wheel bearing noises because the car got bent and if it gets bent then a the wheel bearings often will wear incorrectly and they'll start to roar when you go down the road. So we'll take it for a good road test. So good the AC's blowing freezing cold. And always take a car on a good road test if you're thinking about buying. Transmission shifting good. Going up the hill. We'll go around a corner. Handles good. It's an SUV. They're high up. They're not the greatest handling vehicles in the world, but we hit the gas. Not a race car, but these things never were. Accelerates plenty fine. Shifts into gear fine. Goes into overdrive. Really, this is a pretty good thousand dollar car. As long as you don't mind the bashed inside and realize it came from New York State. It's going to have a lot of superficial rust on it. But as long as it doesn't hurt anything, eh, the frame solid. You can hear the exhaust. Nothing wrong with that. It hasn't even rotted off yet. I mean, hey, my mother had one in Buffalo, and it took uh, took about 12 years. And then, yeah, the muffler rotted off because of all the rust from the salt they put in the road in Buffalo. But this one isn't even that bad. The exhaust system's still solid. Sounds normal. When I went under there, I didn't see any pieces that were rotten and ready to fall off. Now, of course, if you went to a body shop, it would be a ton of money to fix all that stuff on the side. That's one of the reasons the insurance company totaled the car. She decided she didn't want to fix it up herself, so she sold it to him for a thousand bucks. But the car runs good. It tracks good. It goes straight down the road. It corners. It brakes perfectly fine. The AC works good. All the gauges except for the tire pressure monitoring system are working. And really, do you want to spend about three quarters of what you paid for the whole car just to fix that stupid system? I wouldn't. I mean, if you want a tire pressure monitoring system, you can buy those ones made in China that screw on the end of the valves. And you get a little device that reads it, or you can have it broadcast to your phone. And you can see your tire pressure that way. And the decent ones of those are only 80 bucks. You just screw them on yourself. I've got videos of that. You can watch them. And 
and they work pretty good. Rather than spend 800, why not spend 80 bucks? You have a little screen to read it if you want, or on your phone. The factory stuff is just too expensive to fix. You gotta take the tires apart, replace the parts, put the tires back on, rebounce the tires. Not worth doing. But you can go aftermarket with a system for 89 bucks. They work perfectly fine. And then when they go bad, they actually have replaceable batteries. Like the hearing aid for old people, they use the same type of batteries. You can just unscrew it on the outside, put a new battery, and put it in. Not a bad idea if you don't care about having that dumb little light on. You can always put a piece of tape over it if you don't like looking at it. I gotta say, this is probably the best running $1,000 car that I've ever had to check out. Fun to drive. Just looks a little bit awkward, especially when you look at it on the passenger side where it's all smashed in. Driver's side still looks good though. There's no bearing noises when you drive down the road. This car is in excellent shape. The cosmetic stuff is how he got it so cheap. It'll run just as fine with the door bashed in or out. He said water doesn't even come when it rains, so it's sealed inside. Hey, the first car I ever bought was an Opal. I paid 550 bucks for it. Coincidentally, it was also red and it had the right front fender bashed in. Kid at high school was playing around with a Jeep in a used car lot, which had a gravel parking lot. He slid and he smashed into it in another car. Car lot didn't want to fix it, so they sold me it for 550 bucks. I drove that thing all over the place. It was a $550 car. Well, this is a $1,000 car it's from the 1960s today. Yes, things cost more. There's no arguing that. But it's a heck of a lot more car than my $550 Opal, I'll tell you that. And the guy about this, he's a do-it-yourselfer. He's gonna try getting a used fender and door, sand all that down and paint it. It won't run any different than it does now. It'll look a lot better. Either way, it's still a good running car for a thousand bucks. So don't despair today that all the used cars are way too expensive. This one was and it's still got a lot of life in it. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Ben Hall says, what are your thoughts on late model Buicks? Looking at 2019 Regal. I haven't been able to find any reviews. What do you think? My grandfather was a gigantic Buick fan, but he's probably rolling over in his grave if he found out how they're making Buicks today. You know, back in the day, Buick was a real company, made their own cars, and the GM bought them. Most of the Buicks now that you're gonna get are made in China. They're completely different than the ones that were made in the United States for decades and decades and decades. They're mainly going into SUVs now. They they did have a Buick station wagon, but that was a rebranded Opel. It was made in Germany. I'm not a fan of late model GM stuff at all because I see their lack of quality control. I wouldn't pay the money that somebody's going to want for a 2019 Regal myself. You know, you're going to get a Camry, an Avalon, an Acura, or a Lexus. They're much better cars than those are for a luxury type car. They just are. I, I personally wouldn't buy one. Like I said, my grandfather, who was a big Buick fan, he'd probably be rolling over his grave if he how Buick's making cars now. And the fact that a bunch of them are made in China, that really flipped them out. <laughs> Well, you saw that uh, Carvana thing had to be shut down on the East Coast because they were pulling some fast ones with titles and stuff. Well, now Pomona, California is demanding that Carvana shuts down car gumball machine at a fairplex outside of Los Angeles. Use car lots, the gumball, it's a gimmick, you know, they're up in the air. There's plenty of ground, right? But they're going up in the air because, oh, it looks cool. You can get your car like a gumball. They said they're operating an illegal car storage business in an area that they weren't allowed to. There's an area called Fairplex, which is the home of the Los Angeles County Fair. It's owned for fair-related uses, but not for selling cars. They say Carvana doesn't have the permit to operate there. They don't have a city business license. And since it's California, they don't have a state-required environmental impact statement on what it's going to do to the environment there. The people that live around their states created a public nuisance. All the cars and trucks are coming all the time. And of course, land in LA is worth a lot of money, right? Do you really want a giant gumball machine full of cars? What a view we have of the giant car gumball machine. <laughs> And of course, it is California, so they complained about the car noise, the car pollution, and they're saying the workers at Carvana play their music really loud. So obviously, that area around there has become yuppified. As the lawyer says, their activity causes significant noise, dust, vibration, air quality, and traffic impacts on the surrounding area. The County Fair Association that runs that thing said they had an agreement with Carvana to let them use the parking lot for selling cars. Nobody looked into the, the permits, the, the, can you imagine in the future when and it goes, there's going to be abandoned car gumball buildings all over the place. What else are you going to use them for? Turn them into condos where you can bring your car into your condo up in the air. Who knows what the future will bring? But for now, they want to shut that one down. <laughs> 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.